According to Time magazine, Sao Paulo has the world's worst daily traffic jams. It is the most heavily trafficked city in the Western Hemisphere and consistently ranks in the world as one of the cities with the highest transportation needs on a regional and municipal scale. As a city with almost 11 million people living in the city proper, and upwards of 20 million people when including the suburbs on the outskirts of the city, there are immense demands imposed by the mere numbers of people within Sao Paulo who travel on public and private transportation each and every day. Nearly 60% of this city's residents own cars. Each day, this fleet of 6 million cars floods the roads, leading in and out of Sao Paulo. On average, Paulistas spend three to four hours in their daily commute to and from work. This is time being taken away from studying, leisurely re relaxing, and spending time with family. And the figures are rising. Each day, 1,000 new cars are bought in Sao Paulo, which means in the coming years, there will only continue to be more automobiles on the roads of an already severely overpopulated and congested city. The problem, however, is not necessarily the number of cars, but the lack of alternatives. In Sao Paulo, the public transportation system consists of the metro, an underground train system with 12 lines, and a fleet of 17,000 buses running a variety of routes. The metro underground train system in Sao Paulo has only 38 miles of railway, although additional lines are currently in the works. As is the case in Washington, D.C., the bus systems in both cities are more confusing than the metro, and people do not use that system because of the confusion. In addition to its limited scope, Another major issue residents have with the public transportation system is its operational hours. The metro closes at 1 a.m., as do most bus lines. What, what is the schedule of the bus and what is the schedule of the metro? The metro uh, goes too soon. Some stations close at midnight. Sometimes I'm in the street too. Two of morning, yeah. and the bus takes a longer to come. I'm here waiting for 30 minutes, and my bus doesn't come. Why do you decide to use the metro and the bus? Mm, oh, uh, I, I don't, uh, I don't know how to to drive. Eh? I don't like. Uh, um, I don't like cars, and I prefer the uh, public uh, transportation. What do you like about taking the bus or metro? What is good about those systems here? Oh, when I am in, um, in a transport, public transportation, I I feel the persons. I I I feel uh, I am. Uh, I am uh, living with the other persons. When I am uh, driving, I am uh, in other words. Though the infrastructure of the system is limited in its scope, the system, which exists, is very well built, leading to quick ride times and smooth travel. As a result, in Sao Paulo, there are high levels of ridership on the public transportation. I just take one subway to go to work, and after work I have to go to college, then I go walking. Okay, yeah. why do you decide to use the subway and not the bus or a car or...? I actually don't have a car, and just in Countryside. I'm not from here, I'm from Brazil, Countryside. I just study and work here. Okay. But car isn't a good idea in Sao Paulo. For work, for routine, you know. Why not? Traffic. Stress and everything. You can see it's a fucking big city. <laughs> and then for who lives near from work or college, it's better you go walking or by public transportation. If you had the power to do anything, if you were in the government or something, would you change anything about the metro? Uh, no, no, the metro is okay. Uh, they have to expand it. Do you like using the bus or metro? Bus? Um, sometimes uh, when I go 
Okay. Um, as I have one car, it's for me and my husband. Okay. And we have two. Okay. Yeah. What are the good things about using a bus or the the positive things? It's easy. It's easy. It's easy. Why? It's uh it's so powerful. We have a uh, fast. How can I say? Lane street. Fast lane. Corredor inglês. Lane. 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 Uh-huh. Only, only bus. Okay. And it's, uh, sometimes it's faster than car. Oh. Bus is faster than car sometimes. Okay. What about the metro? What are the good things metro about using the metro? It's pretty good. Very good. But, it, uh, metro, it's, it's good. I, I use. Why is it good? Why is it good? Yeah. Because it's faster than bus. Okay. So metro bus, is... It's, it's more uh, specific. Okay. We have, we have more bus in Sao Paulo. We have more bus in Sao Paulo than metro. Metro, it's not uh, anywhere. The metro costs a standard fare of 2 reais and 90 centavos to ride to anywhere within the railway network. And the public bus costs 3 reais. Riders must pay an additional cost if they wish to transfer between bus and metro. The bilhete único, or unified ticket, which is a contactless, stored value card, combines fare purchases for use on the metro, bus, and train. However, public transportation is not being improved because of cost and public priorities. We have also uh, a normal uh, growth of motorcycles small motorcycles, uh, now we sell as many motorcycles as cars in Sao Paulo, uh, because of the traffic jam. This is creating a normal, a massive uh, loss of life and accidents. So, Sao Paulo, only in the city, not in the metropolitan area, we have more than two deaths per day, uh, because of, uh, of young people moving on motorcycles. If you compute the metropolitan area, you have about four deaths per day. Uh, it's an enormous amount of people. So four is about, so we are losing about 1,500 per, per year. Uh, if you sum the deaths because of air pollution, it's 7,000 per year. So our system of transportation skills about 8,000 persons per year. Can you imagine the costs of it, the loss of productivity, the medical expenses of this? Uh, in average, uh, people in Sao Paulo lose about three hours per day in commuting. If you multiply it by the, with the average wage, it represents a lot. Uh, uh, the, the metro system uh, just in terms of uh, hours of time saved, uh, made a, uh, represents about one billion and a half dollars per year in economy. If you transform the hours of work saved and multiply by the average wage in some point, one billion and a half dollars you make 15 kilometers of metro per year. So it means that in 10 years we have the solution of mobility in Sao Paulo, just based on the economy. So I think this cost-benefit analysis, uh, incorporating human quality of life, will be a very efficient way of, uh, of uh, for establishing public policies based in a scenario that will have limited resources, like Brazil. Different from the other locations we examined, in Sao Paulo, a lot of fear exists about taking public transportation, especially at night. Anecdotally, based on observations we made within our homestay families, fear of theft is a threat and a barrier to people's ridership on public transportation, and people clutch their purses and backpacks close to them when they ride on the metro especially. We also came across a social stigma relating to public transportation in Sao Paulo. Is it more or less expensive to 
own and use a car on a regular basis versus public transportation? What are all the expenses and all the costs? It's more expensive. Okay. It's more expensive because we need to buy a car, to, to maintain the car, we need to pay for to the government, the license, and other things. It's not cheap. How much does it cost on average to buy a car? Like, just as not, a, not like a very high end car, not a very low end car. What's like an average price for a car? In dollar? In reais. In reais. It's about uh, average. Maybe uh, it's a simple car, maybe 30, 30 reais. 30,000. 30, 30, 30, okay. Um, and then what are all the other, so you talked about the maintenance costs of a car and the... Because you need to have uh, insurance, not car insurance, mm -hmm. and license every year, and so gas, and so it costs a little bit. Mm -hmm. How much does gas cost? How much do you spend per month on gas? Um, in fact, I start to use my car every day now because my car um, was in the in the park most of the time. But about uh, 300 reais. Uh, 300. 300, yes. Do you use other forms of transportation? In Sao Paulo it's really difficult. Uh, now it's really cars. The collective transport is really not, not good. Mm -hmm. What is not good about it? Well, it's difficult uh, you to take a bus, for example, when always when you take it's full of people and there's not enough uh, bus stations where the places you need to go. Everything is very far here, takes longer. For example, uh, the lady who works with me, she lives far and she takes a bus to come here. Usually she she took she take um, two hours to arrive here stand mm -hmm. Imagine every day two hours stand to, from her house here mm -hmm. and she has to go back also stand two hours she told me this um, one week or two weeks ago I was shocked I said oh my god mm -hmm. imagine how she comes for working yeah it's uh, she arrived already tired. Yeah. If your if she had instead driven a car to come to work, how long would it take her? How much time does she waste on the bus? One and a half an hour. Okay, so it would take thirty minutes in yeah, a car. Thirty minutes. Yes. Sometimes a car is nice when you have to go out with your girlfriend. You know, it, go to go for dinner or to the movies. You know, it, it isn't nice to go by public transportation for that. Does it make you look better? Is it more convenient? What is the... why? I don't know, it's more convenient to go by car. Due to the hefty import taxes from the Brazilian government, a car sold in Brazil can cost upwards of three times as much compared to the exact same car sold in the United States. Thus, to a greater extent than in D.C., the automobile has become a status symbol. Many people's ideal transportation would involve buying a car or a better car model. This societal and individual level attitude is a further barrier to public transportation ridership in Sao Paulo. Interestingly, for the ultra-wealthy population of Sao Paulo, they use helicopters as a means of transportation to avoid road traffic and congestion altogether.
In fact, Sao Paulo has the highest per capita ownership of helicopters of any city in the entire world. Aside from cost, Paulistas face another huge barrier to their access of private transportation. Traffic. Is traffic a problem in Sao Paulo? Is the traffic, is the uh, not enough buses, yes, waiting a lot. Uh, and most of the, the things is the traffic. Well, half an hour, but without traffic, because also with cars, it's terrible. Mm -hmm. the, the situation in Sao Paulo is really difficult to, to live here because it's too much. You always take a, um, last week I was traveling with, when it's rain and then one little rain it's, it's uh, enough for to make a big cows. Uh, I took like uh, three hours from the, the border of the city to, to my home. Actually, usually I take uh, 15 minutes without any traffic, with normal. Uh, so, in the worst times, it's uh, in the end of the day, it's impossible to. You were talking about the rule where, um, in which on certain days of the week, yes. um, you, can't, you can't use your car. How, can you explain that? Yes, the license plate uh, which ends with 1 and 2 cannot go in that hours on Monday, 3 and 4 on Tuesday, 5 and 6 uh, Tuesday Wednesday. On, on Wednesday, yes, and so on, until on Friday. So 7 and 8. S Saturday and, and uh, Sunday, it's okay, it's free. Brazilian government and municipality of Sao Paulo have taken an active role in the regulation of both public and private transportation systems. Their gold standard objective is that people should have the capacity to go everywhere they, that they need to within 30 minutes. The city of Curitiba in Panama is the ultimate model of an urban metropolis for transportation that Sao Paulo is trying to replicate. However, the population demands and structural constraints are very different in both locales.